Hey, it's Candy. Did you know that I have a quiz to help coaches choose their niche? Yeah, I do. It's super popular and it has been taken more than 20,000 times. This is a fun quiz that takes you about two minutes to do, and it will probably give you way more clarity on choosing your best coaching niche. So now whether you say niche or niche, it's going to work for you. And if you're a coach and you have been stuck in niche indecision, wondering what to do, then you should take my quiz and find out what you learn. You can take the quiz today at coachnichequiz.com. That's coachnichequiz.com. Okay, let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzek, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step-by-step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hey, everyone, and welcome to this episode of She Coaches Coaches. I have a special guest here for you today. Now, let me read all the things that she has going on in her life. Her name is Diane Ralston, and she is a leading authority in being a dynamic woman and living a dynamic life. She combines coaching and personal development and many other things to work with women to provide clarity, boost confidence, and get them into action. She is a certified professional coach and an international speaker, 11-time author, workshop leader, and she's the CEO and founder of Dynamic Women Global Club and the Dynamic Woman Podcast, which is a five-time award-winning show in the top 2.5% of podcasts internationally. Her program is VA Made Easy, which is designed to move you from task overwhelm to ease by passing off your work to your very own virtual assistant that she hires for you. You will learn what to delegate and how to easily train them to do it. Plus, you get so many of her systems, processes, trainings, strategy, and support. After leading events and speaking on international stages and becoming an author while raising two young children, Diane is a leader on work-life balance and high achievement. Chicken Soup for the Soul series co-creator Jack Canfield said, Diane is an amazing woman that does incredible work helping women develop, develop holistic lives, and all of balance. So Diane, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. I I really appreciate the invitation and to be able to share some, some insights with your audience. Yeah. And so I know that you've got a very varied business, but the one that we're talking about today is the VA Made Easy. And I specifically invited you to the show because I know so many coaches that really need help. And they struggle finding a VA. And you've got this approach that really, really works. Can you tell me a bit about how you arrived at this point? Yes, I I never thought I'd be teaching people, business owners, how to have a VA, what to delegate, how to delegate, how to train, how to have them create your systems. I didn't never thought that that would be the case. But in working with some of my business clients, I noticed that their progress was often stunted by their lack of time to get things done, their lack of knowledge on how to do the strategy of things, or the lack of tech skill to be able to actually implement things. So it kind of got to the point where I would say to my client, you know, instead of me telling you how to do this landing page, do you want my VA to just set it up for you? Oh, yes, that would be great. I go, good. So now let's move on to the next topic and let's just have them do that. So then I would turn to my VA uh, and all my VAs are in the Philippines and I'd say to them, okay, can you put this together? And then, yes, we need these things. And it would happen like magic. Right. And, and then the (laughs) client would say, oh, that was amazing. Oh my, what else can they do? And I, well, like your social media or do some research or create some Google sheets for you or some other graphics or edit your video or your audios. And it would go on and on and on. And they'd say, 
well, can I just have some hours with them? Like on a continual basis. And so that's kind of where this, the fledgling of passing um, or connecting my VAs to business owners started. But what I realized was the business owners would hit a standstill in, well, what do I delegate? They'd run out of things or they didn't know how to give the right feedback to get the results that they were looking for. They didn't know or have systems in place. And so then I started just sharing my strategies and my systems and my processes and my trainings and my templates and all that stuff. And then uh, I kept trying to connect people and it just, it, it always fell short because I was not in the mix. Uh, mm. And not to say that I'm uh, the best and the know-it-all, but I've had six and a half years experience with Canadian assistants in person then two years experience with virtual assistants, two virtual assistants in the Philippines at 40 hours total. So I've had some time in the game, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until I was at a mastermind in Vegas and where mm -hmm. I go with one of my coach for, to meet one of my coaches three times a year. And some of the other people who were newer said, Diane, like, what is the one thing that's given you all this success? And I said, implementation. And so I explained how I used to implement. And that's probably where a lot of your people are today. They're implementing everything themselves and it's hard. Or they're starting to hire people kind of piece here and piece there through Upwork or Fiverr or someone local or their like neighbor's son, right? One of these things. And I did that as well. But what I found was there was lack of consistency. And every time I went to meet the person, uh, it would be like a new person and a new brand uh, awareness they needed and new access and all this. And so these people, when they said, well, could we just pay you to hire for us and to mm -hmm. teach us? Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Cause I have all this. Other stuff. <laughs> Wait no. a minute here. <laughs> no, 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 no. And they said, please. Cause you like, it seems like you know how to do it all and you could really help us. And I, I do have a training and teaching background. So that piece has always kind of come naturally to me. I was the the kid that the teacher used to sit beside the, the struggling kid, the new kid, the ESL kid, the bullied kid, and I'd always help them along. And so I just, I felt like there was too much in my life already. And so I said, no, when we left the dinner and our mutual friend, your mutual friend and I, I yes, Michelle, yep. she looks yep. at me and she, she laughs. And I said, why were you giving me a side smile at dinner? And she said, you were on fire. Oh. There was such a glow and a spark to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, they want me to run a program. She goes, do it. And I said, no, it's too much. I have too much. And she said, but this is exactly what you believe in helping business owners and, and women to balance their lives and help them to get ahead in their businesses. Why would you not offer this? Right. Right. So there was something really, there's a couple of really interesting things that you said. So first off, I got to focus in on the spark and the glow mm -hmm. and wanting to know, did you actually feel that glow while you were talking about it? And you were just like, no, no, I don't <laughs> feel this, you know, like where we deny our, you know, our purpose, right? Yeah. No, I totally felt it. And the funny thing is for a few years, I'd been feeling like I was in a little bit of a lull um, that I'd lost my spark a little bit. You know, my dad passed, my Facebook account was disabled. I lost all my Facebook ads that I'd been building out. Um, my business had to pivot like many others with COVID. And there was just, there was a lot going on um, that I wasn't a bit of a lull. And so when I get to share and teach and train and pour into others, it does light me up. And the funny thing is it was one of those all you can eat Brazilian meat places. Oh yeah. yeah. I did not eat very much, <laughs> <laughs> but I paid the bill, you know? So anyway, yeah. so it was fun. And the thing is because they were in this mastermind with me and we're, they're newer to their businesses, but when they asked me that I just poured into them and poured into them and poured into them and poured into them. And it was just funny that at the end they were like, okay, that's great, but can you still do it for us? Yeah. Because they saw that the differentiation between like where they are and their knowledge level and what I've been able to, to do with the VAs. So, you know, I, I listened to my friend and her pointing out the spark was, was really important. And I said, yeah, you're right. It does fit in. Mm -hmm. Um, so on the plane ride back from Vegas to Vancouver, I did the outline for the program. And the next week I presented it and we kicked off with 12 people in the program right away. Wow. Wow. There yeah. you go. 
And, and the other thing that I heard is this is, you know, this business, sure, it was a pivot and a, a new offering for you very quickly, but you'd actually spent your entire life preparing for it. Right. And sometimes we don't see that path until the end. And it's like, oh, I never yeah. put those steps together. Yeah. That's yeah. So cool. I love it. Um, so question. There's sort of two places that I hear that your program really helps people. And so that's the people who kind of don't know what they don't know, but they know they don't know stuff. And that is hindering their growth. Mm -hmm. And then there are the people who are like, I've got so much to do and I'm stuck. I mean, of course, the term is I'm stuck in the weeds, but I'm stuck in yeah. the doing and I don't actually yeah. get to do the client creation because I'm not out. I don't have enough time to mm -hmm. go talk to people, to meet people, to do all oh. that stuff. Right. And so there's that, there's either this sort of unknown void that they're going through, mm -hmm. or there's that pull of, I just need more hours in the day. Yeah. Is there another sort of challenge that you notice specifically with your clients that you know would draw them to you a lot of business owners no matter where they are in their journey if they're just starting out or they've been growing for for many years is they don't have systems in place and processes and they're not streamlining their actual business mm -hmm. and so they come to me and they go oh okay well i really yes i want a va and this all sounds amazing but i need to go make my systems first and i go whoa whoa, whoa. no you don't no that's part of the process we do. And I, I hate making processes and systems. That's like step one, type it out, make a screenshot and all, oh my gosh, that, that is the weeds for me. And, and it, I lose myself there. So that's the thing that we can pass off to the VAs, right? So people say, I don't have systems, so I can't have a VA or they'll come to me and they'll say, I hear you're good at systems. Mm. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. So we have a three-step process where we have you film what you're doing, record what you're doing. We pass that off to the VA. The VA has already been trained by us in a system of, of how to document a process and then make checklists on it so that it's always there, no matter who works for you, or if your VA is sick one day and you need to step in, you mm -hmm. have that as your standard operating procedures, your manual, your SOPs. Yeah. And so being able to have that and have that done. And then in the, the preparation of that, the VA actually trains themselves. So it takes the time off of you as well. So people say, well, I don't really know what I do. I go, well, you just, just film yourself doing it. Well, mm -hmm. I still don't know what to do. Well, okay, well, you're going to check with my trainings that I have to see if maybe something that I have can be passed off. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's the, um, you know, sort of the unspoken bonus is not only do you get the assistant, but you get that process set up because so many people like they're used to these processes, they're used to procedures, mm -hmm. but they didn't create them. HR created them at their company or, you know, some other operational department created them. And then all they had to do was abide by it because that's the way we do things here. But mm -hmm. to create it from scratch is, I think a thing that a lot of coaches don't anticipate that they're gonna need. They think that they don't need to spend time on the business side of their business, that mm -hmm. there's just gonna be clients that flow into them and they're gonna coach and it's gonna be wonderful and abundant and they're gonna be free and independent, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna have a unicorn horn on their head and fly off into the distance. Yes. Yeah, but it just doesn't work that way. You know, it's fine for five oh. clients, but then, hey, if you want a business that creates an income and a profit and makes an impact on the world, you got to be ready to, you know, sort of step up to that as well. Yeah. And the worst feeling is when you, when you have your, uh, a good amount of clients that are paying your bills and keeping you going and you feel confident about it. And then one drops off and you go, well, well now what am I going to do? Because if you haven't had support, you don't have the time to do cash flow activities and that could mean you go to the networking event, but then you don't follow up with people or you go to a trade show, but you don't prepare properly for it. Mm -hmm. Then when you're working the table, you get all these leads, but then you're jumping back into the clients you do have and you haven't followed up and done all the things. And then those people maybe 
you do follow up with, and then they go to your website, which hasn't been updated and your social media, which isn't looking great. And they think, oh, maybe not, maybe that's not the right person. And so it's is that, all is that, or is that even the person that I actually met? They seem yes. so interesting in person, but online they look kind of like a hot mess, right? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much <laughs> like no consistency in design, or if it is consistent in design, is it because that business owner stayed up till two in the morning trying to figure out what the posts will be, or did they spend $2,000 or something for like social media person to throw up 10 posts for them for the month. So there's, there's different ways to really be looking at it, but by being able to have someone consistent that can just take the responsibility from you, you don't wake up in the morning and go, I don't know where the next client's coming from, or I don't know what I'm posting today, or, oh, shoot, another week gone by without a blog or a podcast done. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. And that uh, developing consistency in what you put out your marketing mm -hmm. materials and all of that, if you're not consistent, then that's that underlining, I, you can't really trust me, you know, like it's a, it's a little demerit in the trust bank that a potential client might be seeing. I want to just sort of um, change topics slightly, because this was another thing that I really noticed when I spoke to you the first time. And that is the the different cultural approach. So mm -hmm. your team of VAs are in the Philippines. They are. Excellent people with great skills. I know you vet their skills highly, interview them. You've got a whole process. There we go. Processes again, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens is you take somebody who lives in North America and we have such a different culture and such a different expectation. And unknowingly in that gap, you can be creating friction. You can be mm -hmm. creating hardship for yourself. You can be surprised by something that you think now you label as wrong, whereas what you have is a culture gap. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how you help smooth that? Yeah. So people ask, well, why don't you hire from India and Canada and all these other places? There are good people there too, and there totally are. But I was, I locked in the system to be able to hire from the Philippines. I already know, as you said, they're they're highly talented, skilled. They're used to online virtual work. They are okay with working different hours. Their tech knowledge is great. And their English, including their um, kind of lowered accent, is fabulous. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I only want to get to know one culture really well because I don't have the time to figure out all these different cultures. Yeah. So there are a few things that I actually have to help on both sides. And so some of them might be in the Filipino culture with work. If you're going to, if you're sick and you're off, they want to prove that they're sick. Mm -hmm. So they will send photos or uh, medical term explanations. Um where you just need to say, I'm not well, or I have a tummy ache or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, so that was a cultural thing I had to teach the VAs that you don't need to send photos of your sickness um, <laughs> or the medical terms. Cause then you're Googling the me medical term and then it yeah. just come up and it's like, yeah. ah, just, just tell me skin rash. I don't need to know. Yeah. Right? So on that side, that was, that was for them. Plus they are extremely loyal and want to do a good job and sometimes wanting to do a good job and if they're not they'll pull away a little bit um so that's where some people have come to me and said i don't know i had a good va but they ghosted me oh sometimes that's what they'll do is they'll pull away from you out of embarrassment for not doing a good job potentially and on the canadian or u.s side or whoever's hiring you might not be giving enough good feedback so they don't know when they're doing well. Mm -hmm. And so I even like, I've, I, I'm always asking my VAs, what do you need from me? Cause I have two main ones that work with me. And then I have a, a team of 13 others that work with my clients. I say, what, how can I like be better for you? And obviously there's the things that are going across the board, give timely feedback so they can keep working, give the positive as well as honest negative. Mm. Mm -hmm. but speak to whatever the design is or whatever the thing is, but let them know because 
in the letting of them the no okay so here i really wanted this moved over on this design because we want white space here and the importance of white space is that gives the viewer a moment to just like pause mm -hmm. so explaining that or i want all of these testimonials lined up horizontally because when they're up and down it's too too much scrolling on the page. So now they have internalized that and can apply it to the next design, right? Other than uh, I've heard clients say, well, they just keep doing the same thing over and over, same mistake. And I go, have you told them? Mm -hmm. And have you told them why? So mm -hmm. that's really important in the feedback process. And I've learned that sometimes an emoji goes a long way. Right. Isn't that, so, uh, right. That's different <laughs> cultures, right? Like how often would you send an emoji? Maybe, you know, maybe to your, I don't know, teenage daughter or something yes. like that. But other than that, probably not. Right. Yeah. Right. But I, I work with my clients to be able to have them only be online with their VAs, not having to do meetings, these long training sessions. Everything's done in our project management tool that is free. And, and just that correspondence back and forth. But a uh, but adding in, not forgetting the social niceties that we need to put in. Hello, VA. How are you today? As, as your first reach out of the day. Mm -hmm. How I hope you had a great weekend. Now here's getting down to business. And throw yeah. a few emojis in just so that they feel you. Uh, I think that's really important. Okay. Those are really helpful tips. And as you're describing this, it reminds me, these social niceties really remind me of maybe how things were in the 70s, right? Mm -hmm. And we have gotten faster and busier and more like chop, 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 direct, like yeah. got to get this stuff done. And so it, it's not such a bad thing to have a better connection, right? It maybe yeah. reminds us too of things that we might actually like to have more connection too, right? Like in our rush, we forget that we're human first, right? Exactly. That's yeah. super helpful. And actually, so, Candy, let me just yeah, add one ahead. other thing because I, I really want to speak to the loyal piece and the and the hardworking piece of the Filipino VAs. I don't want clients to take advantage of them. So if, if you don't give work until the end of the week, they will work on their weekend. They will work after hours if you're not prepared. And that's not fair for them. They're a very family-oriented culture, quite religious. So they want to be going to church and they want to be with their families. And anywhere anyone needs their weekend off, but they won't say a thing about it. They'll say, it's okay. I don't mind. And that's where I step in. I go, no, you're not working on your weekend. You're not working in your off time. You need to have that. But let's not. And for the clients, it's in your best interest anyway. Because if you continue to give them that outside of their hours work, or you push them, or you're late on payments to them, they might not say anything to you. They'll, mm -hmm. you know, they'll um, just go through and keep working. But eventually, you're going to lose them or they're going to resent you and it's just not going to be a great work environment. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that that is really important. This place where unknowingly people push and just kind of cross the line. And it just reminds me of the emotional bank account, right? Like know, know when you're making a deposit and when you're making withdrawal. And even though the words might say, it's okay, it's no big deal. It actually is a big mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be giving your VA timely feedback and having that ongoing conversation and you give them work, say on a Friday, is it really good for you as a business owner to be working on Saturday and giving them the feedback? Like that, you've got a boundary issue there that could be a problem in the long exactly. run. Like you don't want to get all burned out and fried. This yeah. is your business. You want it to be amazing, right? True. That's so cool. All mm -hmm. right. So talk to me a little bit about, I don't know, I've got a, um, just kind of two different questions going on right now. Okay. So talk to me about, we've sort of spoken about the operational side mm -hmm. and then considerations, but what kinds of surprising support can one of your VAs give? So, mm -hmm. and I know that you shared a list with me quite a long time ago and I looked at it and I was like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of stuff, right? Yes. And, and that, this sort of speaks to that 
you don't know what you don't know, right? So maybe talk a little bit about what kind of surprising support could a VA give you? Mm-hmm. So some of the things that I've had, and I'll just speak maybe to some of the last minute things. So I was you know, invited to do a presentation. It was very last minute. I knew kind of where I was going in, in a very brief write-up in, in a Word doc. And I just copied and pasted that to them. And I said, I need a slideshow made from this. And it was whipped up in Canva. I just went and made some minor edits, but that was done in just you know a couple hours. And then I was like, oh, I want a QR code for the last slide because this is going to be broadcast out and I'm not going to be able to like hand out my business card to everyone there. And then I don't want them to punch in a URL. So then the QR code was made. And then I was like, oh, well, the QR code, let's get it go to a landing page and have people sign up. And so it just was this like, the ability to move that quickly helped me to have the next idea and the next idea and the next idea where I would have just made a PowerPoint presentation and that would have been it and handed out my business card, put my URL on. But the ability to then have that go to a landing page with a whole bunch of stuff, with my email, my CRM connected to it, just mm-hmm. the speed at which I was able to work there was amazing. And sometimes my VAs will come to me and say things like, hey, I think your your IG bio needs an up- update. And I'm like, great idea. And then they give it, you know, it's given to me. And then I go, actually, I have a training on that. Can you watch the training? And then mm-hmm. they watch the training and then they give me... I, the instructions are write down the key points and then give your recommendation of things to bring into my business. Now, in the beginning, you probably can't do that with your VA because they don't know your business well enough, but mm-hmm. give me some recommendations. So here are the recommendations. Great. Okay. We're going to do these ones because it doesn't involve me. And can you prepare it? So actually in the end, she wrote my IG bio or gave me some drafts because I was like, I don't know what to do. And I'm just not doing it. I'm the cog in the wheel. So anytime you're the cog in the wheel, you need to pass something off. Yeah. And so she ended up putting it together. I go, great. I would never use that emoji. Uh, I want this word instead of that word. And then it was done. And I think that's for me, what the issue is most of the time is I have these great ideas or someone gives me a great idea. And then I try to implement it myself. Mm-hmm. And so the ability for others to implement is such a lifesaver. Um, and then just other things like, me having to comment on all my social media posts when people rep- when people comment, I have to reply back. Not have to. I choose to and want to reply back. Right. So our first uh, kind of rule around it was if I haven't replied in six hours, she was to step in and reply. Mm-hmm. Well, then it was always still her replying. So I said, just reply. Uh, and if you don't know how to reply, then let me know. So having that, I, I was surprised that that was possible. And I'd mm-hmm. say the kind of the biggest thing that I've implemented That is one massive system that has been just a game changer for me is I record one video per week. And then my team takes that video and they put it on my YouTube and they edit that audio and they put it on my podcast and then they transcribe that and they put it on my blog and then they take that and they put it on a LinkedIn article and then they pull from all of those assets. They now make all my social media for the week. And then that goes in my newsletter. And so we have that, it's called content multiplication magic. It's a full like program, all the training videos, checklists, everything. My team now implements all of that every single week. Mm. And that's what I just feel that peace that goes with that. You know, like um, my VA is super supportive and she does a ton of that work for me as well. But there's that sense of peace, right? Like Mm -hmm. so many business owners are like, they're so scattered in their head, mm. but if they could have that trust that I just do this one important thing, and that's my IP that comes out in my voice, mm. and I know that it is distributed in a way that is professional and it reflects me and reflects my voice and my values, that is so important. Yeah, because people try thing- to find- Sorry, sorry, there was one thing I wanted to, I just didn't want to lose this thought is when mm-hmm. you were talking about the, um, how you went from concept with a Word document to a presentation in Canva, 
nice platform mm -hmm. and the QR code and the landing page and da, 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 all of that is it really spoke to me about this. You have time to innovate. You have time to be inspired because when you got have time to kind of get that inspirational hit, that's the thing that really connects with your audience, right? It's really like, I have to talk to her. Like they just, mm -hmm. they can, it's like the inspiration sort of hits itself through the wire even, or across the, you know, across the airwaves and yeah, can't measure it, but I know it supports business growth because it supports more of the right people catching that inspiration and that innovation and connecting with you in a way that is just magic, right? Yeah, true. Very true. Yeah. And then I, I was going to add in around when I was a early business owner, I paid for every professional out there that was needed for everything. And I hired a writer even to write for me. I'd mm. share some ideas and then she would go and write my social posts and she was uh, able to capture my voice, which was great, but that's the piece that we need to keep, right? That's the expertise that we need to, to be doing ourselves. And mm -hmm. so people come to me and say, well, how, how do you get a VA to write in your voice? How do you get them to come up with content that's in your industry? I'm like, I don't, you're the expert. Mm -hmm. you, all you need to do is record a 10 minute video one per week or batch and do four and the month's done. Like that's, I just went to this month. I've been in Mexico twice um, because I was able to do that and just pass it off. Now, did I go through and approve everything? Of course, yes. Uh, yeah. because they're humans and I need everything that goes through and out into the world. That's from me. I, I check it. And that's, I think one of the one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they assume that anyone they hire is perfection and knows exactly what they want the first time they ask for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because they're so busy doing being in the weeds, they don't have time to check everything. And it sort of is a, I don't know, it's so it's a weird spin. It's like a vicious circle, right? And then they just keep chasing their tail. They don't get the results they want. And they don't get to be innovative they don't get to put their best work out there their best thought work out there as well yeah true awesome wow well diane we're at time i would yeah. love for you to share how people can find out more about working with you more about how to work with your team so if you could tell us a little bit about it that would be lovely sure yeah well actually i brought a gift um it is the five critical problems to avoid when delegating and why would you care about that? So you can maximize your time as we kind of talked about it and increase your profits, your revenue, right? Um, so I'm sure you'll have the link in the bio. People can go and grab that. Uh, if you want to reach out to me uh, at all, you can go to my website, dianerolston.com or email me, diane at dianerolston.com. Um, we have kind of intakes different times of the year to work with one of our VAs. So the best thing is just to reach out and and to, to book a chat with me so that we can see if it is a fit for you. I have turned people away. I thought, you know, it's not really a fit. Uh, and other people, they, they jumped on it because they were like, oh, right. Yes. Okay. Now I understand. So, uh, and we were talking about this before. You don't have to come to me knowing what you want to delegate or have systems in place or really have everything you know, figured out. I don't care if I see the mess of your business. It doesn't matter because the VA is going to help you to really streamline everything. Uh, and since you mentioned that list uh, of tasks, I, mm -hmm. I really only share that with, with close connections or with my clients in the program. However, you mentioned it and I'd love to do something extra special that if anyone would like that, um, just email me. And, uh, and I'll shoot that over to you. There are 20, 229 tasks that you can delegate to a VA uh, just to kind of get the ball rolling and the, the sparks flowing on what's possible for you. Yeah, yeah. It's an amazing list. So that is a wonderful <laughs> extra bonus gift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And we're still, we're actually making a 2.0 version. We're adding more to it. But there's a part of me that's like, do we add more? Is this overwhelming people? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You could almost make a book about it, you know, like <laughs> if there's something, there's something there. There oh, is I a book it. coming. There is a book coming as well. Yeah. Okay, good to know. All right. Thank you so much, Diane. Gosh, I really appreciated having you. And 
Oh, I just, you know, I had learned a lot from you before in our previous conversations. And again, just learning a lot about this idea about how to have a partner um, mm -hmm. who is a VA for the long run. You know, like this is a long term engagement. This isn't just go and do five hours and everything is perfect. Like you've got to be really invested in your business, invested in the relationship. But the payoff is so yes. huge. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And retention is key to to keep good people, mm -hmm. and it saves you money in the long run. So there are also strategies we put in place for that, and that's something that your listeners really got to think about uh, because having someone on your team for a longer period of time means you can get further faster. Oh, totally. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. All right, everyone. This is the episode for this week. And I would encourage you to reach out to Diane, sign up for her free gift that she's offered or reach out to her directly to find out more about working with her team. Have a great week. Thanks again for listening today. Please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be.